Good morning. Welcome to Voice of Joy Word Ministries International. We thank God for this day that he has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm so glad to be here and so glad that you have joined us this morning. We're just going to have a word of prayer before we delve into the word for this morning. Father, we thank you and we praise you. We give you all the glory today. Hallelujah. Lord, you're so good. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you, Lord, for life. Thank you for health, strength, Father God. Thank you for every good thing, Lord God, that you have given us. Oh, Father, we bless you this morning. And we say, Holy Spirit, have your way in this time. Let your word come forth in power and in might. Let somebody find something out, Lord, that they did not know about you, bringing them closer to you. Father, and I just give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, we're delving right back into our series for this month, for our 9 o'clock service, New Creation Realities. Before I start that, I would just like to give honor to whom honor is due, amen, to our overseer, Overseer Angela Coleman, and to Pastor Andrea Selby, and to each of you this morning. God bless you. New Creation Realities, what a message. Uh, it has really revolutionized my life. It has changed my life forever. And I'm just so excited to share with you what I've learned about New Creation Realities. And so even as I had told you on last week, giving a little brief testimony, how when I came to this church, Voice of Joy, many, many years ago, this was the first message that I heard Bishop Coleman preach. He preached new creation realities and began to tell us about the Father heart of God. And I sat there on that seat, and I just remember that those words were penetrating my life, and I just began to cry and just began to get free and delivered from some things. And so I pray that same thing happens to you. Amen. God is faithful. So we're going to move right on back into it, talking about the creation of man. All right. The reason for man, listen, was to satisfy the father heart of God. What does it mean to satisfy, to fill the, book, the bill, to give full contentment to the father God's heart? From the very beginning, God has always been a father. Before man, he possessed a father nature. His love and desire for children longed for sons and daughters. This desire took form and creation of man was to satisfy the heart of God. You know, in Galatians 4 and 6, it says, And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Amen. You know, as I think about, too, the song, Abba, wow, when that song came out, it, it was just so good, amen. It, it just brought us into that, that place with Abba. You know, as you even think about the Lord's Prayer, starting with Our Father or Abba, we teach our children from little bit of people to say that. And people say it all up through their lives, and sometimes they still don't realize that God is really their father. If they accept Jesus, amen, then they are in union with Father God, amen. So it's such a special thing, such a wonderful thing, all right. So we're going to move right on into the lesson, into Genesis 1, 26 and 27. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fall of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Amen. As I begin to say those overs, looking at that scripture, I thought about Luke 10 and 19. And it says, I have given you power over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. So this is powerful. God gave dominion to Adam. Amen. He gave dominion over all these things. Verse 27, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. All right, so number one, we're going to look at a few points here. A man had to be created in the image of God because his main purpose was to fellowship with God. What does fellowship mean? Communion with God. It means togetherness with God. Amen. It means companionship. It means intimacy. 
we can really know God on that level because now we are a new creation, amen, in Christ. Hallelujah. Our spirits have been recreated. We now have the nature of God, no longer the nature of spiritual death, the nature of Satan. But now we are in God's family, amen. And we can have that type of intimacy with God, amen. It's also defined as an association of persons having similar tastes, interests. Man had to be created in God's image in order to be in God's class, to walk in God's life. Amen? Praise the Lord. And I want to just share some of my notes there. God planned to create a man who would walk with him as his child. He marked us out for sonship through Jesus Christ beforehand. This was God's dream plan, amen, for his children. Man was to be the answer to the father's hunger for kids. God created the universe to be a home for his children. Beautiful, amen. The prairies, the valleys, the mountains, all the seas, the waters, the, the beautiful wonders, amen. God just set it all up just like you would uh, a baby that arrives, amen, preparing for that baby, that baby room, amen. God set everything in order for man to have a beautiful home. In teaching who God is, we have overlooked the fact that he is first a father God. The reason for creation is the father heart of God. Satan has blinded the, the, the man's mind to, to the father nature of God. The average Christian has no real consciousness of God being a father. This is because our minds have not been renewed by the word of God. We've been walking in sense knowledge. What is sense knowledge? Right, it's what you can see, what you can touch, what you can taste, what you can smell, and what you can hear. And those are outward things. Those are senses. Those are physical contact for material things. Amen. That's how we flow as natural human beings. But in order to touch the heart of God, you have to have a recreated spirit. Amen. Amen. It's spirit to spirit. Amen. God is a spirit. Amen. And those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. All right. So the average Christian doesn't really even know that God loves them that way. You know, even in learning about the Father, how to God, as a child and so forth, I'd never really heard so much about the Father. You know, I had heard about Jesus and the Holy Ghost, but not the Father. Amen. And so this was something really totally new. You say, well, that's basic. That ele that's elementary. But I didn't know God on that level. But now I can truly say that I have come to know my Father. Amen. In the middle of the night, I talk to him. Amen. And he's right there with me all the time. Hallelujah. Amen. I can whisper, Father, I love you. Father, I appreciate you. And I know that we have, amen, a relationship. And so that's what he wants for you. Amen. Hallelujah. So we've overlooked that fact, all right? And um, it's because that, of course, that we haven't renewed our mind in the word of God because of sense knowledge having taken place, the place of the word of God in our lives. All right. Man's mind can form no mental picture of God. He is not manifested through the senses. Amen. Hallelujah. There's only one way that you can know him. Amen. Glory to God. All right. So we're going to continue on. All right. Man was created as a triune being. We know that God is a triune being, right? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The plural of majesty, Elohim. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And so he made us in his image and in his likeness. And so we are a triune spirit, a, a triune being. Amen. We are a spirit. We have a soul and we live in a body. Adam walked with God in the cool of the day. Amen. There was no problem that God uh, didn't have a physical body. Amen. Because when they walked and they talked, amen, they fellowship. And that lets us know that Adam was a spirit. Amen. He had a soul and a body. He lived in a body on the earth. But uh, that was subordinate, amen, to his spirit. He was able to fellowship and to flow with God. Amen. Hallelujah. Because man is a spirit, God was able to give him dominion. As a gift to his prized creation, he gave man the right to rule over the universe. Amen. As we know in Psalms 8, uh, 
and it talks about um, what is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visited him that have made him a little lower than the angels amen that were angels being Elohim made him just a shade lower than God hallelujah and then he crowned him with glory and honor amen and then he put him over everything and he told him that everything was under his feet that Psalms 8 go back and digest that amen hallelujah glory to God number three he also gave man responsibility. Man was given the privilege of giving birth, how about this, to the family of God in the earth. He was allowed to rear, to educate, to nurture, and reproduce God's children into the earth. Amen. God told them to be fruitful and multiply. Amen. Amen. So Adam and Eve, they had a, a, an assignment. Amen. They were to help God to uh, bring children into this earth. You know, we are our parents' children, but first, before that, we are God's children. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. So going back to that, um, they were allowed, of course, to uh, nurture and to reproduce God's children to the earth. Man has a soul, the reasoning faculties of man. Man has a will, the part of the soul that possesses the power of choice and the power of determination. Amen. God doesn't have puppets. You know, he wants us to come to him. Amen. What does the scripture say? If you draw nigh to me, I'll draw nigh to you. It's always if what you do, then I will do. But so God is not a, a force. He doesn't force his way on anyone. Amen. He doesn't push you. Amen. Hallelujah. You must come to him on your very free will. You make your own choice. Amen. What does the scripture say in Deuteronomy 30 and 19? It tells you to choose life that both you and your seed may live. So he tells us to do it, but he doesn't make us do anything, amen? It is up to us. He doesn't have puppets. We're not robots, amen? Hallelujah, God wanted children. Also looking at the soul, we have a mind. Because a man was created to fellowship with God, he had to possess an intellect that would fellowship with the Father and that would rule the creation, amen? And he had that, amen, he could. We saw where uh, Adam uh, was put in the garden, amen, to till the ground and, and the animals and to name the animals. As we understand it, there was over 500,000 species of animals that this man named, amen, hallelujah. All right, um, also we're going to look at the body here, looking at the triune being of man. Man's physical body was perfect, not mortal. Mortal beings means to be death doomed, Satan ruled. Okay, and it was, they were not Im immortal as well. Man was an eternal spirit with an eternal soul and body before the fall. Eternal, amen. Amen, there was no death. Glory to God. Number four, man was not subject to death. Man did not know death until he sinned. What does the Bible say in Romans 6, 23? The wages of sin is death, amen. But the gift of God is eternal life. All right. He was flowing only in revelation knowledge. That's all. There was no sense knowledge. He was flowing in revelation knowledge, and to sin would cause him to die spiritually. All right. Spiritual death blinds man from knowing he was created in God's image. He don't know he was created in God's image, so he, don't, he, he doesn't act like God. He doesn't seek God. He doesn't try to find God because he, he doesn't know. All right. The man who is spiritually dead only have the senses. To rely on to perceive God and you can't perceive God through the senses um, now uh, God did something wonderful amen he gave us the Bible amen his inner thoughts his purposes he gave us this Bible this is the only thing that's on the earth that's from heaven amen this is from heaven he said this book with pages or whatever this is a living this is Jesus, amen. This is the living word, amen. And this is what we have from God. He said, well, my God, that's just like our father, amen. He's like, I'm going to meet them where they are, amen, amen, hallelujah. And so we were sense people, sense, sense knowledge, amen. So he gave us something to touch, amen. We can see this, amen, hallelujah. But it won't work for us unless we get it on the inside of us. So this is God's love letter to us. This is God's heart, amen. This is the will of God, amen. This here, amen. I just love the word of God. Glory to God. I love the scripture. I said it last week. I believe it bears repeating, and that's in Psalms 119 and verse 18. Open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things 
out of thy law. Amen. And I'm telling you, there are wondrous things in this book. Amen. I remember sitting here and just reading some of the Old Testament and reading the story of Jacob. Amen. And began to, you know, as as he fought with the angels and wrestled with the angel and it just became so real it was like I was right there and I just began to cry you know just something in me that could relate to that amen so this is not just a boring book or just something amen but this is just full of life amen this is where we are amen it's for today amen hallelujah would you say no limits Hallelujah. No boundaries. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This is for today. This is throughout all generations. Amen. This book will still be the bestseller. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My God, I get excited here. Let me see where I'm at. Amen. All right. Amen. We thank God for the word that he has given us, and we've got to be renewed in our minds amen so that we can flow with revelation knowledge hallelujah now we're going to continue on amen and we want to look at the place that man held the place that man held all right with god he was number one the object of the father god's love and affection he was the object of the father god's love and affection amen hallelujah Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. The object of God's love and affection. Yes, it was. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Looking, looking more into this here. Number two, man was created as nearly like the Father God as was possible, right? He was a triune being as well. He was created as nearly as much like the Father God. All right. Uh, number three, he was um, God's companion and under ruler. God made him the under ruler, right? He, God put him in the garden and made him the under ruler. All right, number four, man was responsible for the heart joy of God. Children, amen, again, talking about how much God wanted children. Although God could have spoken humanity into existence, he chose as a gift to create only two, Adam and Eve, and then he chose to make them fellow workers and bringing the human family into the world. How beautiful is that? Amen. Hallelujah. And now, even as being the new creation, we're doing that too, in a sense. As we look at um, the scripture basis and the main scriptures for this lesson, which are found in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Amen. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. And then on down in those verses, it talks about us being ministers of reconciliation, being uh, in God's stead, bringing and reconciling, amen, people back to God, amen, God using us, uh, amen. He expects us as his children, as ministers of reconciliation to go, amen, and tell somebody about the goodness of God, to go, amen, and lay hands on the sick and see them recover, hallelujah, to be witnesses, to teach the word of God. This is the expectation of God, amen. So we are ministers of reconciliation, hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Hallelujah, glory to God, amen. Praise the Lord. Looking on a little further here. All right. All right. Amen. Okay. Just one minute here. Looking on a little further in our notes here. We're going to look at Genesis 2 and 16. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden, Thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. All right? And the word die there, uh, that word uh, there uh, is not meaning only physical death, but there's a progression when you talk about death. All right? There are three types of death. You have, number one, spiritual death, and that's to be separated from God. Remember when Jesus said, he said on the cross, uh, why hast thou forsaken me? Father, Father, why is thou forsaken me? We know that in Habakkuk 1 and 13, it says God could not look on sin, amen, even on the beloved Jesus. It says thou art of purer eyes 
than to behold evil and canst not look on iniquity. Cannot, God cannot do it. Amen. All right. So that's spiritual death to be separated from God. Number two, physical death, separation of spirit and soul from the body. All right. And then eternal death, which is the second death. You hear someone say second death or eternal death. That, mean, that means that uh, eternal separation from God into hell. All right. That's what that eternal death means. And we don't want that. All right. Now we're going to look at the deception, all right, the deception that happened in the Garden of Eden. What does deception mean? It means betrayal. It means treachery. It means uh, uh, double dealing. It means pretense. It means treason. It means lying. It means cheat, all right. In 1 Timothy 2 and 14, the Bible says that, it, and Adam was not deceived by the woman being deceived was in the transgression, okay. So Adam wasn't deceived, but, but uh, Eve was deceived. She was the one that was deceived. Adam knew exactly what he was doing, all right? All right, and we're going to read uh, just a little bit here of, of um, Genesis, the third chapter, verses 1 through 7 here. Get in the word a little bit here. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes, your eyes will be open, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. All right, talking about the deception, all right. And so we see that uh, in this sixth verse here, it talks about uh, th that uh, there was a threefold Thing that um, Eve went through as far as deception. She had number one, the lust of the flesh, and what that means is to be satisfied at another's expense. In this case, it was God's expense, all right? Number two, the lust of the eyes. When she saw, when she saw, it looked good. When she saw, it looked good, all right? And then three, the pride of life. You shall be as gods. Lucifer in heaven was in charge of the music, beauty, and wisdom. We can see uh, through Eve how he offered his own qualities upon her. Amen. I was thinking he might be, he might have been singing. He might have been trying to be like Barry White, so, you know, singing, singing, you know, eat this fruit, you know, God, God, you're not gonna die, you're not gonna die, you know, whatever. Amen. Amen. But you know, Lucifer, Lucifer was beauty. He was beautiful. Amen. And and sometimes we we want to gravitate to what looks good, but that's a no no. Amen. It's not good for you. Well, everything that looked good is not good for you. Amen. Amen. We can take that to the bank. All right. All right. Also looking at B here, the nature of the adversary. The nature of the adversary. God has an adversary. A lot of people don't know that. Even just in the body of Christ, it seems, people don't know that God has an adversary. His name is Satan. Amen. Glory to God. My God. It's not God that's doing these things. The thief comes but for to steal, kill, and destroy. All this stuff that you're seeing. The thief comes but for to steal and destroy. But God has come to give us life in that more abundantly. Amen. That's in John 10 and 10. All right. B, the nature of the adversary. Verification. You have got, you have, ye, yeah, have God said. Satan tries to see if we know what is, it is that God has said to us. Testing us. Amen. To see if we know. All right. Then he tries the disputing thing. If we prove not to know what it is that God has said, then the enemy tries to directly dispute what God has given us. You've got to know what God has said, amen, to us. Amen. Don't be moved by the trickery of the enemy. That's another scripture, amen, that has been put uh, over this lesson, you know, to, that don't be ignorant of Satan's devices, all right, unless Satan gains, gain an advantage of you. Deception, if we buy into his game, then he reels us in, hook, line, and sinker. All right, see, the nature of man's sin, the nature of man's sin in the garden was neither of these three points of the enemy's nature. The nature of the man's sin was rooted in the authority that man was given. The man took the authority that was put in his hand 
and convert it into the hands of God's enemy, Satan. The act is called high treason. Satan was given the right to rule over us until we became new creatures and got into the body of Christ, all right? Number one, the justice of God, of, of God upheld the treason of man. Even though Adam messed up royally and released his authority, God's perfect justice upheld man's foolishness while his grace provided for man's redemption, amen? Number two, Satan did not foresee God's redemption. He thought that God would punish the man the way he was punished and thereby he could cause God great suffering. Amen. He wanted to separate the union of God. He 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 was had bitter hatred towards God. And so he didn't he didn't want uh, this to be successful. Amen. So this is one of the reasons why he tempted Eve, all right? And number 3, man's sin brought spiritual death on all humanity. It brought spiritual death on all humanity. Amen. All right, and you can find that in Romans 5 and 12. All right. Uh, Eve's deception was uh, by Satan was due to three possible things. Number one, Adam's inability to convey the command properly. Number two, Eve's misunderstanding of the word spoken and Eve's unbelief or Eve's unbelief of the word spoken. All right. My Lord. Hallelujah. So we're going to look at that a little bit. Adam committed high treason. God gave man dominion over the universe. This was the most sacred inheritance God gave to man. The sin was unpardonable. Adam knew the result of the crime he had committed. You know, the, the nature of man's sin, it wasn't breaking God's law because the law had not been given yet. Adam gave the authority and dominion that God gave him over to God's enemy. He did this in the white light of absolute knowledge. He wasn't deceived by Satan. He understood exactly what he was doing. My God, my God, my God. He understood exactly what he was doing. So uh, there is no excuse. Amen. He knew exactly what he was doing. All right. And we're going to look uh, lastly here at the reign of spiritual death. Ephesians 2 and 3 says, Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath. What does wrath mean? Vengeance as the consequence of anger, even as others. Also, we want to uh, read Matthew 6 and 24. It says, no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Amen? Amen. And this is, this is what Adam had to learn the hard way. He went through, amen, because of what he did. All right, number one here, man's inability to respond to God's call. There was a spiritual blockage. He, he could not flow, all right? He could not have fellowship with God. His, his, his fellowship was broken. He couldn't walk in the cool of the day with God and chat with God anymore because when you're in sin, uh, it's an open door to spiritual death, and God cannot come, amen? He can't look on sin, amen? So the fellowship had been broken, and that happens even in our lives, you know, but we, we can get that fellowship. We can get that back in line, amen? Hallelujah, by going to God. Amen, hallelujah. Man could only respond to his new master, the devil. All right, the dominion of Satan's will over Adam's will began uh, the moment he uh, obeyed the voice of the devil. All right, I thought about that, and I wrote, to tell a lie or anything evil, you're opening the door for destruction. All right, all right. So man could not respond uh, to God. Number two, looking at the reign of spiritual death, Man has no legal approval to God. Man was considered an outlaw. My Lord, God drove out the man and placed swords with flames of fire on them at every entrance of the tree of life. Amen? He drove them out. Now think about this. If God would still have received Adam with having Satan's nature, then that would mean that the nature of God and Satan would be united in one individual. No, that cannot be. Amen. Can you imagine that? That kind of person that would uh, have come forth out of this union? There is no way. Amen. You can't have, you can't have both. Amen. You can't serve God and mammon. You can't be two. You can't mix it up. It can't, it can't be mixed. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. So God had to drive them out of the garden. He had to shut it down. Amen. Because you cannot mix the two. They're totally different. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, and also redemption would have been impossible if God would have allowed that. Number four, thorns and thistles now cover this once perfect earth. 
the creation that we talked about, how God created the earth for man, how God stored up treasures of all kinds of wealth for man. He filled it with deposits of iron, copper, silver, and gold, covered the earth with mountains and valleys, prairies, and beautiful colored flowers to thrill our hearts. Amen. I don't know about you, but I get excited when I see some beautiful roses, peach, they have all kinds, amen, all kinds of colors. And, and this is from God, amen. He gave us the beauty, amen, his splendor, his glory to, to thrill our hearts, amen. We can have this, but now you have to work hard for it, amen. You got to pay for it, amen. And, and with the first Adam and in the, in the Garden of Eden, it was just there for them. They had everything, amen, my God. Number five, murder and lying becomes a part of man's family. We see Cain and Abel, their children, and how Cain rose up against Abel because of anger and jealousy and killed his brother. All right, this is Adam and Eve's sons. All right, so we see that uh, Cain rose up and killed uh, Abel. All right, Adam really felt the reality of spiritual death. He had not only sinned against God, but the entire human race. It doesn't pay to persist with having our own way. We lose in the end. Amen. If you don't get anything else today out of what I'm saying, amen, it doesn't pay to have your own way. You will lose in the end. Amen. His whole family was affected. Whole family. And, and the whole human race. Everybody was born into sin. And you say, but God and but redemption, which we're going to hear about soon in, a, in, a, in the upcoming weeks. All right. His first grandchild is named Enosh in memory of his sin. Enosh meaning frail, in regret of his sin, mortal. So he's got a grandchild. His first grandchild was named Enosh. Amen. I said the child probably went through a lot of rejection and all kinds of stuff. Amen. Oh, my, my, my. Getting to our last points here. Uh, number seven, reason is born. When faith died, revelation knowledge ceased. What is revelation knowledge? God revealing himself to man. When faith died, revelation knowledge has ceased. Man began to order his life by reason, trying to figure everything out from the outside. Sense knowledge, right? What he sees, what he feels, what he hears, tastes, and smells. Reason is the product of man's senses. It has always been enmity toward the knowledge of God. Faith or any act that is above the realm of human ability. Regardless of how high man's aim may be, he cannot rise above the level of his senses. We can never go higher than what our image is. That's why we must know who we are in Christ. And that's what New Creation Realities is all about. Knowing your identity. We are a new creation. We are a new race of people. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We are different. We are people of love. Amen. When we come into a room, hallelujah, the room lights up. Amen. If we, if we, if we got it like we're supposed to have it. Amen. Because, we have, because when you're renewed in the spirit of your mind, Amen. You have the joy of the Lord because you're obeying the word. The word says rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Amen. Amen. So we kind of, we change, we set our atmosphere. Amen. What did God created things by words? Amen. Hallelujah. You see all through uh, Genesis 1, 2, 3, you see what God said. God said, and let there be. Amen. Everything created by words. And so that's what we do. Amen. So we realize, hallelujah, that death and life are in the power of our tongue. Amen. And we get the fruit of what we speak. So we're, we're like our father. I remember many years ago when I first came to BOJ, one of the statements and quotes that a bishop used to say was, everything is, everything is image and image is everything. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So he was beginning to let us know, teaching us out of the word of God, you know, teaching us that we are kings and priests unto the Lord, teaching us, amen, that we uh, should be walking in the image of our God just like our father, amen? But we see here, as the, the spiritual death was reigning, the walk in the spirit is lost. He cannot find God, yet his spirit cries out for God. He is unable to strike at the root of it, doesn't understand why, uh, why such a, a short lifespan is the, call, is the cause of sin, sickness, and death. Man feels he is born to die, amen? In his reasoning, he concludes that his creator is not a God, 
that loves him. So he rejects him. He rejects the revelation of a father. And that's what we see today, all right? There was a scientist that said, the God of the Christians is not a God of love. The sisters of charity are kinder than he. Sense knowledge, they couldn't find. They couldn't find God, amen? Because they were not have, did not have a recreated spirit. Man was blinded by his spiritual father, Satan. He didn't understand what had happened in the beginning. He doesn't know that um, because of the trespasses of one, death reigned upon everybody. Spiritual death or the nature of Satan brings sickness, it brings death, it brings every sorrow that has darkened the life of man. Amen. But we want to know the truth. Amen. And so that's what we're going to find out as we continue to go forth with the new creation of reality teaching. I pray that you found something out today, amen, about your father. Get close to him, amen. He wants to be close to you, glory to God. And we bless him today and give him glory. Father, we thank you for this lesson. We thank you for all that I've heard, Lord. We just ask, Father God, that your people, Lord, would just get into your word, Father, and behold the wondrous things that you have put in your word, that they would renew their minds in the word of God, Father. And we give you the glory and the praise in Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, glory to God in the highest. I praise God. God bless you.